Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Uh, thank you. Okay. So, uh, are there any talks that are longer than zero? That's uh, colored. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, I know. I'll send you one. Uh, this is like a dollar for a piece. Right, twenty-five cents. That's right. Yeah, I think I'll stick with this. If yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So let me. So I'm going to work over the complex numbers. And <laughs> <laughs> so you know, if you do that, you can do reduction mod p. <laughs> anyway, uh, and also. I'd like to always assume that whatever I work with is normal, which is not true in practice, but it's just easier than putting in a normalization and then just having a clog of uh, uh, notation. OK, and I'd like to have some notation that I, I'll keep for, for some time. So uh, let's say that x is normal, and we'll have a, a pair in the sense of uh, Apollo, and then so delta is an effective divisor, and uh, let's pick one component where for this guy, I'll assume that uh, this is a reduced effective Cartier divisor, and what else? Uh, so also for simplicity, actually, if I need to, I'll assume that D is also normal. So that's, as, that's kind of the one where you don't want to assume normal. But uh, for simplicity, I'll do that. OK. And so when I was a graduate student and I heard the term inversion of a junction, I thought that was kind of a funny thing. How can you invert? A junction when injunction is a, a junction is a, an equation. How can you invert an equation? So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. So a junction is uh, well for this D. So D is a Cartier divisor. So we can take k x plus uh, D and restrict it to D and that will be KD. So this is a junction. So how could you invert this, right? But uh, what really happens is that uh, if you're in this situation, then the same thing basically just says that if I take this, the corresponding log canonical divisor, restrict it to D, then this will be KD plus D prime D, where this D prime D, I'm sorry, delta prime D, is just a restriction of delta prime to d. And of course, this is still the same equation. But the point is that now, if you look at a, a log resolution of this pair, and you look at uh, discrepancies, then just by restriction, you can see that um, the discrepancies that appear for a resolution of d are not worse than the discrepancies that appear uh, for x delta. So basically, a junction implies that if x delta is uh, log terminal or log canonical, then so is the delta prime d. I will be a little bit uh, vague sometimes. So for example, I don't want to worry about what exactly LT means. So LT is your favorite version of uh, uh, KLT, DLT, uh, or even 
uh, call it a weekly log terminal if you want. Uh. OK, so really, a junction is this conclusion when we talk about inversion of a junction. So inversion of a junction is really the, the reverse of this. So we would like to say that uh, if the delta prime d is log canonical, or I'll probably just stick to log canonical, but uh, there are uh, many statements where you can replace log canonical with log terminal. Uh, then we would like to say that then x delta is log canonical. And of course, here it comes handy if I assume that d is normal, because otherwise this would not make sense. OK. So, um, yeah. Right, I guess uh, this is the point where I should mention some names. So, uh, Shokurov was the first to prove a version of this, then Kawakita proved the log canonical version, and then Haken proved the version where the, uh, it's sort of about higher dimensional, codimen uh, higher codimensional uh, sub varieties. Uh, okay. So that's sort of what we mean by inversion of a junction. And my main interest in this is uh, application to moduli theory. So when you do moduli of higher dimensional varieties, then it's not fully obvious, <laughs> at least if you, so if you studied uh, Mumford, then trying to do the same thing in higher dimensions, it's not clear what semi-stable uh, uh, semi resolution is or what it, what it should be. And one of the, the ingenious insight of Kolar and Schefferberg was that the semi-stable reduction in higher dimension should be just a relative low canonical model of the family. Okay? So uh, that leads to the notion of a low canonical morphism. So Let's say that we have a dominant morphism where the target is a smooth curve. And, and x is still that, so there is a delta. So we say that uh, the map from the pair x delta to c is log canonical. If um, for any point in C, the pair x delta plus xt is log canonical, where xt is just a fiber over t. So what does inversion of a junction tell us about this? Well, it tells us that if, say, all the fibers are normal, then this condition is the same thing as to say that the fibers should have log canonical uh, singularities. So essentially, you look at a, a family of log canonical singularities. Inversion of a junction tells us that uh, to require that is essentially the same as requiring the uh, total space to have log canonical singularities. But there's this sort of a little thing about uh, the fiber, but uh, that's not so bad. And to do this definition, I actually don't need to assume that the fiber is normal. So that's kind of a, an advantage. OK? So, uh, so we have that. And yet a further statement. So, uh, so I guess primarily we're interested in moduli theory because we want to do moduli of smooth varieties, and then that doesn't give us a compact moduli space, so we would like to extend that. So that's somehow how stable curves were invented uh, from smooth curves. So you can think about looking at uh, a family of uh, stable varieties in higher dimensions, and I'm purposefully not defining stable, so think of stable whatever you think it should be. But there's some reasonable definition. But let's say that I assume that the, the general fiber is smooth, or 
at least it's the uh, canonical model of uh, something smooth. So for example, I would like to assume that the general fiber of the family is canonical. So in other words, this is such that generically this pair x delta should be canonical. So uh, let me put that into more concrete terms. So further, furthermore, so we have this inversion of a junction, which this applied to here. I could say that, well, just as that this condition is essentially equivalent to requiring that the, the fibers are uh, log canonical. And uh, a further statement that follows from inversion of a junction is that if, in addition, so, OK, let me actually say this way. So if, uh, actually, let me revise this a little bit. So inversion of a junction, let me make it two statements. So one is that for, for a family that if x t delta t is log canonical, then x delta is log canonical. Now, the, uh, uh, so you probably observe that this is not exactly what I have there. But if this is log canonical, now c is a smooth curve, so xt is actually a Cartier divisor. So if this is log canonical, then I can drop down. Uh, the advantage of putting it this way is that now this doesn't depend on xt, on p. I'm sorry? Oh, um, sorry, is LC near uh, x? Yes, thank you. So this is sort of, in some sense, it's, it's a lesser statement than having a, being a low canonical uh, family. And the second statement is that if I have this condition, but in addition, I have that the complement is actually canonical, then, well, of course, by this, this will imply that uh, this will be log canonical. But it, it's actually more that this is canonical. So if you assume that the general fiber is nice and the special fiber is log canonical, then the total space will be actually one bare. It will be canonical. Okay, And this is not too hard. So it's basically inversion of rejection. But once you have the uh, log canonical, log canonicity of x delta plus x t, then from this you observe that all the, all the log canonical uh, centers are included in the fiber. So when you drop the fiber, it will actually be, it will go from log canonical to canonical. So here, I couldn't add the, the fiber. So the, that's basically what gives me the uh, the improvement. OK, so uh, basically, my goal today is uh, to generalize this to uh, other classes of singularities. <laughs>
on x, then h i x e is isomorphic to h i y pi upper star e. And this is a simple application of the projection formula. So for example, on Kawata Fiveg uh, vanishing holds on rational on varieties with rational singularities. And uh, it's also rational implies uh, Colmacoli, so sad duality also holds. So it's sort of um, A lot of things that you do with cohomology it works on uh, varieties with rational singularities are uh, pretty much unchanged. And as Carl mentioned, Alkic proof that log, ter log terminal implies rational. And I don't know if it's really a simple application of Kodai vanishing, but. It's not the only Okay, well, I think uh, that conclusion is a, uh, is a result of, uh, of many people uh, uh, polishing the proof. <laughs> so if you actually look at Alkic's proof, it's quite difficult. A, she uses a kind of a, a double, twi uses Grothendieck duality twice in f once for a birational morphism and once for the morphism restricted to the, uh, to the locus where it's not an isomorphism and there it's not a birational map. So it's sort of, uh, it's actually, it's worth looking at the proof because I, th I think it's, it's quite interesting how you can use Grothendieck duality. By now, you don't need it, but I mean, you don't need that elaborate proof, but uh, it's a good thing to learn it. Okay, so this means uh, that, you know, Kanta feedback vanishing, uh, sad duality, all kinds of things that you can do for rational varieties. Uh, hold on varieties with log terminal singularities. But unfortunately, LC is not even Colmacoli. So strictly speaking, none of these uh, hold for log canonical singularities, even though uh, we would like them to. So it, it would be very nice if they did. So sticking to uh, I'll call it a feedback vanishing. Um, so I always find it interesting that Kata feedback would be abbreviated the same way as Kodaira vanishing. And it somehow you don't need to uh, uh, use different uh, uh, acronyms. So, uh, so Kodaira has a, an interesting observation which says essentially that if coherent cohomology comes from topological data, then there is a Kodaira vanishing type statement. So this is not a, this is not a theorem. It's a principle. It's a philosophy. Uh, but this can be put into uh, sort of a, uh, a more precise statement. And he also goes and, and gives a proof of Kodaira vanishing, where uh, if you've seen Kodaira, proofs of Kodaira vanishing, the, most of the proofs have some kind of an analytic or topological ingredient. Uh, but uh, it's questionable how much topology or how much Hodge theory you use. So uh, OK, so there's. Uh, of course, Hodge theory. And uh, Kolar points out that the, the only thing that we need from Hodge theory for this is that um, so if x is proper, then the, uh, what is this called? Simplicial, uh, uh, not simplicial, singular. Uh, singular cohomology of X uh, subjects onto the coherent uh, cohomology of OX. So this clearly follows. 
I'm sorry? Um, okay. <laughs> if. <laughs> so, okay. So basically, the, the point is, uh, if x is proper and smooth, then this holds. And then Kolar goes on and, and uh, proves Kolar vanishing uh, uh, follows. Of course, this is not an entirely obvious uh, implication, but uh, the point is that the rest is an algebraic argument. Uh, no, I think he uses the upshift. So there's a, there's a proof that uses that, but uh, 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 so his point is that, that you can actually uh, do la use less. So there's this, I think that's uh, Ramanujan's proof, maybe, that the left shuts. Yeah. So, uh, right, and that actually proves more because it proves Kolei-Alkizuki-Nakano. So this is only kolei vanishing and, well, let me not get into the proof, okay? But the point is, basically, that according to his philosophy, we don't really need smooth, what we need is this uh, uh, subjection. So kind of the, the question follows. Well, actually, let me, before I do that question. So, um, so we know that this holds for smooth, obviously. Smooth is OK. But already the Ling, when he developed Hodge theory, noted that this also holds if x has a uh, simple normal crossing which, of course, doesn't fit my assumption that x is normal. Because as we know, simple normal crossing is not normal. Uh, but which just actually proves that normal is not necessarily the simplest singularity. So, uh, but anyway, um, so it's hold for, it holds for S and C. And it actually also holds for rational uh, that, uh, that's a result of mine from a long time ago. So once we know that this holds for rational, you could ask the question. So OK, so it holds for rational. So basically, by Kolar's principle, Kodaria vanishing holds for rational. But of course, it already holds easier. But at least in this framework, um, uh, this, this seems a little bit more general. So for example, one question one can ask is that uh, can we weaken the definition of rational, rational singularities, such that uh, this will still hold. Uh, but it would include low canonical singularities. Okay, so we want to enlarge the singularity, the class of singularities, uh, the class of rational singularities, so that this enlarged class includes low canonical, but still has uh, this property. So potentially, uh, there is a quality vanishing type statement. Hmm. The problem with this eraser thing is that uh, it's hard to erase just part of the board. No? So I guess I'll. That's all right. Everyone will remember everything that I ever wrote on the board. Are there judges who give points for cleaning them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's getting worse, huh? I tried uh, memorizing how Thomas did it. It seemed very efficient. 
Okay, so, uh, well, I guess maybe uh, it's not going to be a surprise that uh, the, the class that I'm talking about is Dubois, as uh, Carl mentioned. So, uh, so now, actually, uh, well, so I didn't, didn't know what Carl w was saying. <laughs> Even though uh, this was planned that I would talk after him. But, uh, okay, so let me, okay, to be true to history, this is not the reason the Bois singularities were introduced. So, uh, Steinbrink introduced them from a Hodge theoretic point of view. And uh, I don't even know exactly what was his, in his mind. So, right, so I mean, I can speculate. I'm just saying I don't know. Uh, maybe Willem. Uh, uh, so, um, okay. So anyway, uh, so here's, here's one way you could get to the same notion as, as uh, uh, Steinbring did. So we have rational singularities. And Kemp's criterion says that rational is the same as normal Colin-Macaulay. And for resolution, so let's say I fix a resolution of singularities here. Oh, and I just noticed my y is totally different than Carl's y. So it's, uh, oh, it's Carl's my, Carl my, any German? Mm? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is equivalent to rational singularities. And now if you think about uh, these conditions, and add Gorenstein, then this is actually equivalent to log Terman. Right? So uh, if omega x is the line bundle, then this condition is equivalent to the log Terman condition. Maybe it doesn't look like the usual thing that, that you're used to, but, but it's true. And what would be the log canonical equivalent of that? Well, uh, the log canonical equivalent is that if E is the reduced exceptional divisor uh, of that, and let's assume that the exceptional set is a divisor, then uh, if I add that E here and take the push forward, then uh, requiring this would be the equivalent to log canonical, assuming that x is uh, Gorenstein. Okay, and so um, so I guess one could say that uh, one candidate could be that, well, at least assuming Colmacaulay and normal. I don't know if I really need normal. That this could be an extension. And um, if you're not familiar with this, so, uh, so when you have a, a push forward, then effective divisors, effective exceptional divisors uh, disappear in push forward. So if this is true, then this is true as well. Okay? Because there's always a map from here to there, and this guy is sitting in between. So if this is an isomorphism, then whatever is sitting in between will be even more of an isomorphism. Okay. So, uh, so that looks good. And of course, uh, this is kind of a, in the old fashioned uh, language, uh, since we're already working with derived categories, uh, one could actually put these two into the condition that the Juizen complex is isomorphic to pi r star omega y. D, so in other words, there's only one non-zero cohomology, which is equivalent to Colmacaulay, and that non-zero cohomology is omega x, or is the push, I mean, it's always omega x, that's how we define omega x, and uh, it's the push forward, so D is the dimension of x, okay? 
So one could say that normal plus this is equivalent to uh, rational. Maybe I should arrange it like, uh, I'm sorry? No, D. So this, so the H minus D cohomology of this is that, right? Because the shift means that, uh, yep. Okay. Okay. So, so I guess maybe uh, a candidate for this would be omega x dot. So candidate for Dubois is that omega x dot would be pi r star omega y e d. But at least, uh, so I'm saying candidate. So I, uh, I think I can say anything if I say candidate. <laughs> OK. But it's not a Manjurian candidate. OK. So, uh, so the actual definition of Dubois, as Carl uh, explained is it's kind of, so in some sense it's a local version of of that or in kind of a more uh, precise sense uh, so there is a complex that we usually denote by this so what this refers to is that uh, we look at some kind of a generalization of the uh, Durham complex which has omega p's and Usually, when we work on smooth varieties, then we don't write omega 0, but, but we write Ox. But that's really omega 0. And the underline means that it's actually not the usual Durham complex, but we run some singular guy. And because we run a singular guy, the definition of this is not it does not necessarily give Ox in the 0 theorem. It gives the guy that, that works well with the Hodge uh, theory. OK? But, uh, there's a definition of this, which Carl actually gave, and I, I'm not going to. Um, but it's functorial, <clears throat> and there are, uh, there are functorial maps in the uh, bonded derived category of uh, coherent sheaves uh, like this. I'm sorry? Oh, that's right. OK. Then in the bonded derived uh, complex of filtered uh, complexes with uh, differentials of order at most one with coherent co uh, gray, gray, <laughs> associated graded cohomology. <laughs> OK, so there's some derived category where this, these uh, uh, <laughs> No, they're all planned. I, I got. I don't have enough material to talk about. It, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, ra really, I. <laughs> which derived category? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, okay, uh, that's that's actually a detail that that one. So, I would like to work in the uh, algebraic category. But sometimes you have to uh, consider the, the associated analytic space. But because of the Gaga principle, when we go back to cohomology, it will be the same. But OK. OK, so as long as what I write, yes. it's, it's all, it all works in the algebraic category. So, I didn't say coherent. No, by so I I thought the question is about the topology. So if we identify everything, then then this then it's fine. Don't we just? No, I was just wondering. I mean, you're not speaking to this guy. It's a resolution. Oh, not this one. Okay. So the the whole story is that there's an omega x dot complex dot, not zero. And that's quasi-isomorphic to C. OK? So it, analytically, and this is, so I should probably write something like this. OK? And then this is a filtered object. And it has uh, associated graded quotients, which are not sheaves, but 
uh, complexes. And this is the zeroth uh, graded quotient. OK? Yeah. OK. Everyone happy? Good. OK, so, so we have these, uh, these maps. And of course, basically, I could say that there's a map and that factors to OX. So that's sort of the idea. And uh, such that, that, for example, if X is proper, then the uh, in, uh, induced map on cohomology is surjective. And then since this map will factor through the map for OX, this will also be subjective. OK? But, uh, OK. So, so we have a, a, a subjective map. So this is, this is what comes from Hodge theory. So if you want, all the previous Hodge theory applications uh, come from this. Because for X smooth, this is actually an isomorphism. And then the definition of Dubois is that uh, X has Dubois singularities if this induced map here is an isomorphism. Okay. Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. And actually, Kolar has been asking this. And the answer is that, um, OK, so I guess I can fit it in here if I make this a little smaller. But I'm really losing time. Yes, I have to cut some jokes later on. <laughs> OK, so um, here's the best that I know. And there might be better statements, but the, the following is true. So, um, so what really is happening is, uh, is that, so Hodge theory gives us a, a, a filtration of this, right? So there's a, there's a filtration, and then there's a, so I guess eventually I, I'm getting here, but basically what I would like to say is that uh, this guy always has a quotient which is the zeroth graded quotient according to the Hodge filtration. OK? And now, um, OK, so if let's start with having this condition. So if I have this condition, then any general hyperplane section, so let's say x is projective, any general hyperplane sections will have the same condition just because if you look at the definitions, if you take a general hyperplane section, you can use the same resolution, and it will resolve that, and everything will be fine. And, and so this condition is inherited by general hyperplane sections. And so the theorem, then, is that if x is projective, and every hyperplane section has this condition on the cohomology, then it's equivalent to that condition. Okay? So I don't know if it would be enough. I'm kind of guessing that it's not enough if you just have the cohomology. Do you know an explicit example? Yeah. I'm betting that it's not enough, but I, I don't know an example off the top of my head. So that's why I said this is the best that I know. OK, so uh, and, but even this uh, hyperplane cut thing is, is relatively recent result. So it's, uh, uh, it's not totally obvious. Does this answer your question? Uh, so I guess one could actually define a class of singularities with this condition. And that's, in some sense, that's our goal. On the other hand, this subjectivity requires at least x to be proper. And it's not a good thing to define a singularity assuming that the total space is proper. So basically, this condition is a local is it, this is local, right? So it being isomorphic, this is a natural map. So being isomorphic is a local condition. So this is a local condition. And that theorem about uh, hyperplane cuts tells us that, that it's actually, it's not bringing in extra stuff. So it, it only defines singularities 
that that we want. Okay. Okay. So I guess I cleared this to state that theorem, but now I can use it for other uh, some other use. So uh, so there's this uh, sort of uh, dual definition of uh, of rational, and uh, there's a, a corresponding dual definition of Dubois, or at least a, a dual complex that one can uh, look at. And not just one can, but it's useful to look at. So we define omega x underline dot, just in the style of the dualizing complex, to be sort of the uh, dual of the Dubois complex. Trying to remove the remaining smudges from my subpar uh, cleaning of the board. Um, so basically, we want Dubois to be defined by the condition that this guy is OX. If it were OX, then this would be just the dualizing complex. Right? So we have a natural map. OX goes to omega x uh, 0. So if I apply R harm onto this, then this is a, a contravariant functor. So I get a map from omega x underneath, underlined to omega x dot. So this is the usual dualizing complex. And this is sort of the uh, omega dual of the uh, Dubois complex. Okay, And of course, a uh, trivial fact that x is Dubois if and only if this is an isomorphism. They start at 11. So is it until 50 or? OK. So 10 more minutes. OK. So I think you gave Paolo two extra minutes for cleaning the board. I'm not the moderator. I'll come to you. If I clean it, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so omega x zero No, it's a complex. No, a complex of complexes is a complex. Right? So, uh, so that when I write our harm, I think of that, that as a functor on the derived category. So both inputs are complexes, and then the output is also a complex. So there's, uh, there's the derived category harm, which is you know all kinds of harms across and then add it up. And then there's a way to relate that to this. So, OK. Very good. So, uh, so now we know what, uh, what the uh, singlet is that we're interested in. Oh, and I just erased what I, no, uh, yeah, I already erased in the, on the previous. So I had the, those two statements of inversion of the junction. So basically, I would like to, so the goal is to have those statements with low canonical replaced with Dubois and uh, canonical replaced with rational. OK? So the first theorem is that, so this is actually not directly uh, uh, an inversion of a junction statement. Well, it's not an in inversion of a junction statement, but this is sort of the, the core uh, result that allows us to 
prove this. And I think it, it's interesting on its own and maybe somewhat surprising. So if we look at that, that map, omega x bar dot, or dot bar under bar to omega x dot, that map induces uh, maps on cohomology. So by this, I mean the cohomology sheaves. Okay, so you have a complex, you look at the cohomology sheaves, and the statement is that these are always injective. That, and this does not assume anything about uh, Dubois. So just, uh, we can define those objects for any uh, uh, complex scheme of finite type over C. And uh, no, no is actually what, you know, this is the, the curly the curly if you want, yes. Cohomology of the complexes. So this has the immediate corollary that if X is Colomacoli, then this complex also only have one non-zero term. So if X is Colomacoli, then HJ omega X underlined bar is zero for J not equal minus dimension, minus D where D is the dimension of X. So in particular, uh, so in other words, this means that omega X dot is uh, H minus D omega X bar dot D. Okay? And then there's an earlier theorem of us uh, along with Karen Smith that said, I hope I'll state this right, that uh, H minus D omega X dot is isomorphic to pi R star omega Y E. And I'm using the, the previous notation. And also, this requires X to be equidimensional and uh, an R1, but I really assume that it's normal, so, so it's R1. Okay, and then if you combine these two, then you get that, uh, well, I guess, these that uh, if X is Colomacoli, then omega X dot is isomorphic to phi R star omega Y E D, so if you remember my candidate for Dubois singularities, it was that at least for Colomac-Coli singularities, this complex would be the duizing complex. So the definition of Dubois is that this complex is isomorphic to the uh, duizing complex. We're proving that this complex is isomorphic to that. So the definition of Dubois is equivalent for Colomac-Coli singularities to the duizing complex being isomorphic to this, okay? And then from this it's immediate that if X is Gorenstein, then log canonical is equivalent to Dubois. Right, because log canonical for Gorenstein was equivalent to omega uh, X being isomorphic to this. And then for Colomacoli, Dubois is equivalent to this. They're equivalent to the same thing. Blood, you're. In which of these terms is this true, Dubois? Or this? Where it's stated, I assume Dubois. So, so that these these statements do not need Dubois. So it's for any. It's any x, but it's underlined. Yeah. Right? Yes. So this is true for any x. So this is actually, so this statement is just about this complex. Yeah, so this one, this one is actually, it doesn't even need x normal or equidimensional. It's very, uh, well, um, so the corollary needs, uh, so uh, this one, yes. Uh, well, yeah, for, right, x is Gorenstein and normal, yeah. Well, for low canonical, you need normal. That yeah, so uh, I just, 
I decided not to mention semi-local in this talk. I didn't know that Carl was going to. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, right, so if I drop normal, then it would be semi-local because I'm going to that. The only thing is that then I would have to revise a lot of notation. As if I talk about semi-local, uh, then I have to talk about semi-resolutions instead of resolutions. And I just didn't want to do that. Okay? And also, so this requires some assumption on the singular set being uh, co-dimension two, because if you have a one-dimensional singular set, then what is the resolution? So it's sort of not. Uh, uh, there are ways to fix it. It's just, uh, yeah. I'm taking the easiest way to fix it and assume something strong that uh, takes care of that. I might, oh, I have one minute and only three pages left. OK, uh, so let me, um, well, how about if I just state, uh, state the, how about if I just go to the last page? <sighs> OK, so basically what I'm skipping is the following, that, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just telling you what I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> OK, this is almost as good as uh, Carl's uh, comment uh, after his time expired uh, about the test idea. <laughs> anyway, so um, right. So uh, you may have noticed that the original inversion of a junction is about pairs. And I've been talking about not pairs. The delta disappeared. So the thing is that uh, recently, both the notion of rational singularities and Dubois singularities have been extended to pairs. It's not completely obvious how to do that because there's sort of a, a, a reasonable guess how you would do it, but then if you check it on examples, it's not going to work ever. And the reason is that, uh, for example, for rational pairs, uh, you have to restrict the kind of resolutions that you allow. And but it, it can be done, so uh, there's a notion that Janusz and I introduced that's called the thrifty resolution, and I'm, I will, happy to, will be happy to explain to anyone who cares after the talk. But you, you have to work with thrifty resolutions in order to define rational pairs, but if you do that, then it, uh, it makes perfect sense, and it's a complete pair analog of rational yeah. singing. So it's a DLP analog. Yeah. Oh, right, yes. So I should mention that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, even, I think, uh, a little bit before us, uh, uh, Schwed and Takagi also defined the notion of uh, rational singularities for pairs. And theirs, uh, their approach is a little bit different. And uh, so their approach is more like a, a KLT kind of approach, how you would uh, generalize L LT to KLT. And ours is more like how you would generalize LT to DLTs. Um, being the, the main difference is that for them, the boundaries have fractional but less than one coefficient. And we actually wanted to have uh, coefficient one. So in our definition, uh, a rational pair, the, the boundary divisor is actually a, a reduced divisor. OK, so uh, you can do that. And you can define a, a notion of Dubois for pairs. And once you have that, then uh, we actually do have, maybe I'll just actually state the, the inversion of a junction 1 and 2. So, uh, so you'll see what we have. So if that, we have a flat projective family such that D is also flat over B. So this is a, uh, a reduced divisor. So this is reduced divisor. Um, and T is a, and B is smooth, smooth, at least dimension one. It's important. Uh, the dimension zero case being trivial, but not, not true. Uh, <laughs> and I fix, uh, fix a point on B, then we have the following two statements. So if the pair xt dt is Dubois, 
then xd is Dubois near uh, xt. And of course, since a general hyperplane section of a Dubois, uh, also of Dubois pair is also Dubois, this means that nearby fibers are also Dubois. So Dubois is invariant under deformations. And two, we also have the, the improvement part of inversion of a junction, namely, if we assume this, and that the complement is a rational pair, then the two together implies that the ambient pair is rational. And so this is the complete analogy in the LC to LC and LC and canonical to canonical uh, statement. Uh, I'd like to, I know I'm over time, but just want to point out one thing that uh, here we assume that this is projective and that's a limitation. So there's, we conjecture that projective is not needed here. The reason that we assume projective is that there's, so this was actually going to be theorem one, two, three, and four, and I didn't state theorem two, which is a statement uh, that essentially says that if you have a, a Dubois fam projective Dubois family, then being co Macaulay is not just open but a closed condition. And we use that in the proof of this. So, um, so in the log canonical case, the exact same proof would work, and we could even assume projective because Haken and Zhu prove that uh, uh, log canonical varieties have log canonical compactifications. So log canonical family can, has a log canonical, uh, so there's a projective log canonical family that extends that, at least with the appropriate assumptions. Uh, so if we had the same thing for Dubois, then then this projective could be dropped. So uh, we conjecture that both the, the Comacoli statement and this, these statements are hold without the projective assumption. So thank you for your patience. Is it okay? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, it works. So, uh, so y you can actually, no, there, there, I think this is enough. So here you can say that x, the union xt is the one. So it's actually, it's the same thing. It turns out that, that this is not much more work. So once you have this and that, then the two together uh, essentially implies that. But it, it's a perfectly good question. There was a. Yeah. Um, I to be but, but can you give an example of what you like to do, which is not look at all, right? Yes, so Carl mentioned that you can take any smooth variety and then you embed it with some uh, high, multi, high Veronese and take a cone over that. This will be Dubois. And uh, it will be easily, you know, uh, or uh, low canonic is a very restrictive thing. On, so, so for example, you, you take any curve that's genus at least two, then that will be. So actually, I, I'd like to mention that I think in Carl's talk that uh, um, this occurrence of these two conjectures. Uh, so there was something about Dubois singularities, and, and even though we like to say that Dubois is really an analog of low canonical, but it's, it's as much an analog of low canonical as rational is of low, an analog of low terminal or canonical. But Dubois is, at the same time is very general in this sense that uh, uh, there are lots of examples. Uh, so there, it, there's much more examples of Dubois than uh, say low canonical. A log terminal. Uh, uh, so, is there a, a log pair uh, analog of this? For example, if you assume that delta is log pair, does it say that delta is 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's cartier. Then. Yes. Yes. So it's actually it's. Yeah, it's actually through both. Uh, if you assume that kx plus the thing is uh, is a line bundle, or if you just assume that kx is a line bundle, so the. Really? <laughs> that one is less trivial, I think. So the the second statement is actually a a, a joint result with Patrick Graf. Uh, that for uh, that if X is Gorenstein, then uh, then being a Dubois pair implies that it's low canonical, and then uh, so. Yes. Yes. So that's also true. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, right. There's something I'm. That you. All oh, right. Yes. So there's one thing that that uh, Dubois pairs and both and rational pairs lack, that low canonical and low terminal pairs have. That. So if you have a, a low canonical pair and you subtract a Q Cartier divisor from the boundary, then it's still low canonical. This is not true for the Dubois pairs and rational pairs. So for example, it's not true that the ambient variety is, uh, is necessarily rational Dubois. It is true if X is Gorenstein. If KX is Cartier. If these, that's right, yeah. So there are various uh, conditions under which it holds, but not not as general as in the. Maybe I can make a small comment on this. I mean, so there's a version of Dubois pair, even, even if he's not a divisor, one where he's in a subvariant. And one reason why you might want to have a subvariant is because the So it's almost like a, a natal type managing. Yeah, so. and, 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 and then it's actually might, might even you know, also be good that Dubois is so much more general because you might be able to pick up pairs that are Dubois and still have vanishing even on spaces that are not log canonical Dubois or anything like that themselves. And the same for rational. So it, you, know, you can imagine that uh, you can make something a rational pair that doesn't have rational singularities, but you can add a, a, a divisor such that the pair has rational singularity. And let me put in a plug that uh, there's a paper on the archive 